well, and I just got these progressive lenses, so I thought, you know, I can actually read a speech now, but do you mind if I just speak from the heart today? Instead of a written speech? We're all ears. One of the things, I, and I, I'm running for U.S. Congress here in Michigan's 8th District. So that's all of Ingham County, that's all of Livingston County, that's the north part of Oakland, but that could change. We have redistricting going on that may, may take place. So the 8th District may be over there, or it might be over there, or it might not exist anymore. Let me ask a question. Have any of you been following this redistricting commission? Yeah. Yes. Did you hear that they actually refuse to say the Pledge of Allegiance before they start their meetings? Because the Pledge of Allegiance is too divisive. Oh my God. How many, uh, how many students are here today? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for coming. We're here doing this today for all of you. We're fighting for you. Right. Now, what's going on here today has a little bit of a personal touch. My daughter is in high school. She's a sophomore this year. And she goes to a charter school, but it's still a public school. And she's been a straight-A student for her entire student career until this year. And she's having a real hard time with this online schooling stuff. She, she's really one of these students that has to be involved. But not only that, but then you have the social aspect of it that she and her friends can't get together and, and, and do their, their normal stuff. So it's, uh, it's sad. It's sad. But part of having these new progressive lenses is I went back through the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, and I still haven't found that fine print that says that all of our God-given inalienable rights are valid as, as, as long as we don't have an epidemic or a pandemic. I still didn't see that fine print. And so these schools need to be opened. But see, folks, we've, we've, we've fallen into this thing. This is, I, I put a post on, on Twitter today and on Facebook. How do we lose our freedoms? The left is really good at it because they convince a lot of people that it's reasonable. It's reasonable. Let me, let me show you something. Stay six feet apart when eating together. It's only six feet. That's reasonable, right? Wear a mask. It's only a mask. Yeah. That's reasonable. It's for your safety. It's for the safety of others. It's only. They, they minimize our freedoms in the pursuit of taking them away. Yeah. In the pursuit of it's for your own good. It's for your safety. I believe it was Thomas Jefferson that said I would rather have... Uh, what was it? Uh, help me out, guys. Dangerous who, freedom. Who reads Thomas Jefferson quotes? I'm having a Biden moment here. You know that thing. That thing. I would rather... I think he said, I'd rather live on my feet than die on my knees. Was that Jefferson? One of them said that. You know the thing. Dangerous freedom, safe full, on, safe full tyranny. Liberty Michigan's corn pop right here, Oh, that's but it's only. It's only a mask. It's only social distancing. It's only a vaccine. It's only, it's only bump stops. Skin. It's only silencers. It's only background checks. That's reasonable. It's only. It's only. It's only. It's only refugees. It's only children. It's only. And those rights keep slipping away because a lot of folks out there think that's reasonable. It's only temporary. We're only going to close schools temporarily until we flatten the curve. One year later. It's only now putting masks on two-year-olds. Right. How do you like that? Did you see that? Oh, the other day? Oh, Disgusting. Oh, masks on two-year-olds. Child abuse. Child abuse. Child abuse. Where's the science there? There is none. And if you listen to the Wizards of Smart in the medical community, the kids aren't getting this. Kids aren't transmitting this. Right. So why are we now putting masks on two-year-olds? Insanity. Control. It makes no sense. Oh. Folks, this is why I'm doing this. I'm not one of these that wants to get up and give the I report. I, 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 I. That's not who I am. This is about you. But I'm running for office because I'm fed up. I'm fed up. What choice do we have? What place can we go? We can't just escape and go somewhere else. We live in the freest nation that this world has ever seen. Our founders were a unique set of individuals, which, by the way, the left wants to demonize and delegitimize and say that they don't count and everything that they wrote is illegitimate. That's why 
if the left had the option to tear up our Constitutional Bill of Rights like Nancy Pelosi did with Trump's speech last year, they would do that because they believe that the Constitutional Bill of Rights is outdated and it was written by illegitimate people. Folks, where else is there to go? We either fight for it and protect it and restore it or we lose all of it. And as you've seen now with it's only temporary, we're just going to lock down the state just for a short period of time. The masks are only temporary. It's just a short amount of time and then we'll get past the curve and then life will go on as normal. We're now 400 days into this and we're still masked up. We're still locked up. You still can't go have a normal life. And it will not change until the people of this state and this country stand up and say enough. That's what I'm out there fighting for you guys. I, you know, I'll tell you what, one last little analogy. It's like the frog in the pot of water. It's only a bath, Mr. Frog. It's just warm water. And that water temperature keeps going up a little by little by little. And by the time the frog realizes it's boiling, it's too late, the frog's cooked. Little by little, we're losing our freedoms. I'm not here to just say, you're losing your freedoms. I'm here to try to help the frog out of the water and turn the fire off. Love you all. God bless.